Hi, thanks. I am a medical oncologist by profession and uh, there is a lot to talk about environment, it is its impact on an individual and also the impact of environment and individual and cancer if you take all three of them together. So when you see the data around, you find that almost 70 to 90 percent of lifestyle and environment, they are prone to cancer risks. And you can see the graph here where it shows that it is directly proportional. Now, how is it true? I'll just try to tell you, you know, as I go through my talk. Several substances in the environment are known, you know, to cause or are likely to cause cancer in uh, humans. There are certain substances which have a direct causation and association with cancer. But there are other substances which are known to lead to cancer in some way, either directly or indirectly. To explain that, how these carcinogens or how these irritants work on the human cell. See, this photograph here, this cartoon shows that how the normal signal transduction or how the traveling of the system, the, the signal takes place from the cell that is outside to inside the nucleus where, you know, the actual propagation of the cell division occurs. So this is a normal process in which you have a signal which is fired inside the cell and then that leads to the replication and that again leads to the normal cell propagation. In an abnormal situation where you have these irritants, these carcinogens, these oncogenes, what happens is that there is an explosive stimulation and there is a rapid fire of these signals down into the cell and what that leads to is inescent tumor proliferation. One of the most important causes which have a direct causation and association relationship is tobacco and all of us know that. And because of the awareness, there has been a rapid decline in tobacco smoking in most of the areas of the world. All of you must be knowing about the first-hand smoke. First-hand smoke is the person or the individual who's smoking. Second-hand smoke is the person who's in the vicinity, who's also inhaling the same amount of smoke and the same amount of tobacco and the carcinogens. There's another thing which is known as the third-hand smoke, in which whenever a smoker comes out of a room, the carcinogens, they get deposited on the bed sheets, on the curtains, on the milieu, anywhere. And per chance, if a non-smoker comes into the room, he or she inhales that and the impact, let me tell you, is almost the same. Now, this is third-hand smoke and I won't be surprised in the next decade, that will be the fourth-hand smoke, you know, the kind of pollution which we are having. Open up your cell phone, you look at the weather and in the background you'll be seeing whether it is haze or smoke or dust. It will never be light blue. That is, you know, as far as whenever I see in Delhi. So I won't be surprised that would be the fourth hand smoke in the later date. There are other uh, substances, obesity is there, certain red meats are there. You know, they again have an indirect association with cancer and they are known to cause a lot of cancers directly or indirectly. Apart from that, alcoholic drinks, the more you consume, the worse it is. Anything which is taken in a small uh, volume, it is good for the health. But when you abuse that, it becomes counterproductive and the body goes against it. When you come to the sunlight, there are certain people who are susceptible to the ultraviolet radiation which is uh, released by the sun. And these people are the ones which have skin cancer. Other uh, issues which are there, when you inhale these fine dust particles like asbestos, silica, which are there in certain mining companies, in certain uh, uh, companies which are making uh, rooftops for the asbestos, these are the ones, they again, when inhaled inside, they can cause things like lung cancer. These fine particles are the ones which are the causative agents. Toxins from the fungus. This is a very, very uh, important fact. You know, when you take these, uh, inhale these fungal spores inside, they are known to cause 
you know, cancer of the liver, especially the aflatoxin which is there. If you go to the viruses and bacteria, cervical cancer, which is a known uh, entity, the human papilloma virus, that is known to cause the cervical cancer. The incidence of cervical cancer, it becomes more and more, you know, the day when you are infected with the virus, the gestation period is about 15 to 20 years, and after that, you find that these ladies, they get afflicted from cervical cancer. Similarly is with hepatitis, long-term exposure to hepatitis B and hepatitis C viruses can cause hepatocellular cancer or the liver cancer. Now, when you see the environs around you, the amount of pesticides, I happen to see one of my patients in my clinic and he happened to be a farmer. I asked him that, uh, what are you growing? He said, I have apples. So I said that, uh, what about the uh, herbicides and the pesticide? He proudly said that I give four or five times the actual amount which has been required. And I asked him why. He said that it, you know, takes away all the bugs and all and I get a very healthy harvest. So in the bargain what we are doing is, we are abusing the environment and we are causing a lot of damage. Other things like dioxins, the waste which is there, we feel very happy nowadays that when we incinerate all that, then everything is taken care of. But unfortunately, that waste which is burnt off, that leads to the dioxins which go into the atmosphere and they get leached down into the water table and they contaminate the water. And again, you know, the same thing goes into our food chain and causes a havoc there. The next would be the solvents like benzene, which is used in the paint industry, the carbon tetrachloride, and all these again, they can again uh, cause uh, bladder cancer, which is there, very prevalent in the workers who are working in these kind of uh, situations. This, I'm sure you must have uh, seen nowadays, because of the policies of our government, the price of diesel is slightly lesser than the price of petrol. And these diesel exhaust particles, they are known carcinogens and when they are released into the environment, they cause all kind of pollution uh, variables which can again cause lung cancer in these patients. Not to talk of mobile phones, I'm sure all of you must have heard it's throughout in the media. But then uh, the children which have a thinner skull, the penetration of these electromagnetic radiations, when they go inside, there are studies to show that they lead to a higher propensity of acoustic neuromas, brain cancers. And also these mobile towers which are there, they are again known to cause all kind of, uh, you know, the release of these electromagnetic radiations. And one of the known features, that is the acute lymphatic leukemia, that is the blood cancer that is caused by you know, uh, the electromagnetic radiations in the houses which are below the wires. When I was a child, you know, sparrows used to be there, and now I don't find sparrows. And there is a hypothesis that, you know, these mobile towers, these electromagnetic radiations might be, you know, a part of the environmental damage because they are small beings, unlike the pigeons which you find nowadays, they must have got extinct. Now, having talked about that, what are the ways to reduce the risk? This is smoking cessation. You try to lose weight. You try to avoid and prevent bacterial and viral infections, whichever way you want. Avoid direct, frequent and prolonged exposure to chemicals, if possible. And also have a very, very rapid screening and early diagnosis. Mind you, if you are being treated for a very common ailment, and after giving certain normal treatments, you find that this keeps on lingering on for a period of four to six weeks. There should be a very strong index of suspicion in the mind that am I dealing with something else apart from uh, common cold, cough and this. So whenever we have a strong index of suspicion, we always have to quantify it, go in depth, try to find out what all are the possible causes and then, you know, take it from there. So there is a strong you know, association between the environment and an individual. It is the equal responsibility of each of the individuals to take care and to make sure, you know, that this environment is not abused. We find that whenever we take care, we take steps, 
then you know we try to minimize all these problems. Bottom line is that everything, the environmental change, the changes which we can make as an individual, they have to be individualized according to the country, according to the situation and according to the needs. And when we do that, I think we'll be able to make it a better society. Thank you.